Kaya Rychik, Rychik, whatever. Um, I don't particularly care to give her the respect uh, of identifying her in the way that she wants to be identified because she doesn't seem to do so uh, for everybody else. The hate monger Chaya Rychik of Libs of TikTok is coming out with a book. Um, she Her picture book for children is called No More Secrets, The Candy Cavern. And it tells the story of Rose, a young lamb child whose teacher mr woolly is insisting that all the kids in the school get sweets post the school address yeah <laughs> the kids get candy and cupcakes they don't read or count just candy and cupcakes candy and cupcakes the kids can't resist all of the sweets being provided to them by their teacher um and here she is reading very charismatically an excerpt from that book <laughs> Um, at, to a bunch of kids who don't seem to give a shit. Here, I saved you a cupcake. We saved Rose a cupcake because he realized she didn't have any cupcakes at recess. Rose felt funny. Something didn't feel right. She said, I don't think my parents would want me to have so much cake. Maybe I can take the cupcake home and ask them. That's very reasonable, right? She'll take the cupcake home and she'll ask her mom and dad if she can eat it because she already had so much candy. No, how Mr. Wooly. You're old enough to make your own decisions. Mm. Okay. I well, can't imagine. Note. I can't oh, imagine I, why such a talent would fall for the uh, you know down the right wing rabbit hole and become a right wing influencer. I mean, so many opportunities. I'm sure were in front of her. Uh, a, a Hollywood career, uh, lots of work as an audio book narrator. Um, I, I can't imagine what made her uh, flock to the right. Well, the book itself seemed very mid. It seems like, you know, in the movie Elf, when they they published a really bad children's book at first, and then they have to get Peter Dinklage to come in and write a good one. Uh -huh. Like that's, what, that's the level of book I'm getting from this. But also the delivery. I personally wouldn't have chosen to read or debut my like children's book to a crowd of children as though I'm giving a presentation at like a regional academic conference for yeah. my like senior undergraduate thesis but that's just me i would have probably just sat around in a library to have it done it just was this was very like lecture style I, I, yeah I, you know like, it reminds three out of me ten. and and someone who's clearly not the greatest at public speaking uh she just didn't want to bring any of the pizzazz that would confuse any of the children like colorful costumes or something like that that might make them think that this is an actually fun child focused event like drag queen story hour or something like that this instead is just anti-social uh loser story hour brought to you by chaya Reichik, who I, I just I got a note kind of interesting to me that she likens transitioning into uh your preferred gender to a sugary cupcake that you can't it's, help but eat it's, over it's, and over and well, over was that, that word the, she used in the other in that one fox clip we, we it was like we were watching this fox nation clip with her and tucker and she it was like intoxicating or yes. enthralling like the the the, the like transgenderism or gender ideology like it's she she frames it as if it's like a intoxicant or like a i know she's a, a real uh case of uh, that freud would would have a field day with but yeah all the protesters I, I, for a uh, uh, right-wing freak uh story hour in the, I really outside, the outside this library I, Actually, I, the I, protest I, was from the inside the library itself with the people working at the <laughs> library you saw what they did yeah and Before, the, 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 okay on twitter uh, someone who was there posted photos from inside the library and they asked when and it was all uh, trans flags, LGBT flags, all the LGBT books front and center like shown. And they asked, oh, when did you put these displays up? And this was on the day of the Chaya Reitschik book reading. And they said, oh, yesterday. So, I mean, Beautiful. there was a protest, a quiet protest from the people working at that library, it seems. Go ahead, Brandon. Oh, no, I was just thinking, I mean, the harshest criticism were coming from the crowd itself and they're the dead silence that you you heard from a, a trial of children. Yeah, I mean, it, it is it, it, it's first of all, I love the subterfuge and the context that you uh, provided, Bender. But 
hey, the audience is the ultimate arbiter of this kind of stuff, right? And they did not seem to be as down as like the dancing kids I see at Drag Queen Story Hour. Also, imagine imagine you're a kid and this woman's coming in reading her storybook and she's like, wait, you're telling me I could either have more candy and more cake or I have to go home and receive my parents permission to eat more cake and more candy like <laughs> this woman's lame yeah this woman is a loser I know <laughs> this is, I, this, I, yeah, this is why they're banning all the other books so that there's nothing yeah. else to compare it with this is why they, they don't want right. you to have Dr. Seuss anymore they just want you to only be allowed to read like this and like Matt Walsh's book about being a furry I, I didn't really get that one either their, yeah. their analogies are always really bad because they are always, always like misrepresenting what the right wing position is and so it just comes across as like you know a confused critique of capitalism like mindless consumption but like in their eyes like no this is what CRT is yeah, isn't that right? They're supposed to. I thought that they were all pro consumption, right? That must confuse the children even more than whatever this convoluted narrative is supposed to convey. Like, I thought that I was supposed to take what I wanted in conservative <laughs> ideology. And I mean, again, if you're desi- you're trying to appeal to kids in theory so that they don't fall to for mr woolly's bid to get them to transition into another gender but you're likening it to candy and cake this is the opposite that that it's supposed to uh, 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 i don't know messaging wise she just probably should have had an editor or three Mr. W- and it, instead of Rose went home to her parents and then, and then they posted a video on TikTok saying this is where Mr. Wooly is located. It would be a real shame if something happened to him for giving cake to kids. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, like that we watched some cartoon in class that I wasn't allowed to watch at home. And I said something to the teacher like, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to watch this. My parents don't let me watch it at home. And I got laughed at in the middle of class. <laughs> And uh, I learned my lesson, don't, don't be a loser. <laughs> and I learned that in, in first grade. So that's what she's teaching uh, teaching to, to the kids. Anti-trans authors have really come, they have really fallen far since Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh, yeah. You I know, mean, at least I, that was a compelling narrative. Now we've got uh, just some mixed metaphors that don't even make any fucking sense. Just imagine, oh, yeah. though, writing a children's book inspired by your anti-trans <laughs> activism. Like, how sad is that? Like, yeah. that's what you want to teach your children. It's, not even, not even pro something. Not even like, oh, sharing is caring and be a good person. <laughs> like, just very general. No, you want to base your entire, uh, you know, your entire thing, your entire who you are, your entire personality, on anti-trans activism what a sad life what just a it's sad just sad life. it's sad and to produce this propaganda is also very sad and because the quality of it is very low like you know it's very low quality propaganda and you know it's propaganda and it's like self-realized propaganda because they're doing this because they think that that's what the other side is doing like mm-hmm. they read books like i don't know i don't know what the what the hip kids book are, are but you know they read books like the house on mango street and they think it's like pro-immigration propaganda you know <laughs> they, and you know other people just go like no this is the lived experience of a group of people you know this is uh you know this is a book that's teaching people it's okay to like like your own hair it's not propaganda it's like education and then they make their books and it's like no this is just straight up propaganda you're just trying to put that propaganda in the hands of like children like and it's you know I guess we're lucky they're not good at it. It's and real, it's so much real. cruder. Like, I mean, because the actual stuff that they're combating isn't real propaganda. It's actual writing. And this is just uh, straight up sh- trying to shove a square peg into a round hole to make a hateful narrative work. They're, they've never been good at metaphors. So children's so children's books are going to be a hard, going to be a <laughs> hard genre to break into. Yes. They're writing YA yeah, novels. <laughs> What are, what are the characters' names? That's what I want to know. I bet it's like as on the nose as possible. You know what I mean? Rose like, and Mr. Wooly, yeah, right? Yeah, Rose is the protagonist, and then Mr. Wooly is the teacher. Is the evil teacher trying to give you cake and candy. <laughs> Film him! <laughs> Film him giving out candy! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wooly, okay. I know. Ugh. She didn't even, She could have done something with that, and she didn't. But but Brandon, I think you're so right about the idea because like the thing about this about this being more propagandistic than like what they consider to be propaganda is that there's actually nothing like 
serialized or narrativized about this like the point like the the story of the book is is the agenda that they want to carry out like, yes. there's nothing else that they're talking about there are no other details it is only in service of the point that she's trying to make <laughs> like the house on mango street wasn't like oh i like my hair let's open the border <laughs> like like you know like, like this this is like this is just so ham-fisted as opposed to anything that they would even consider to be propaganda i.e actual fucking literature right yeah it's you know it's really really blunt <laughs> 